Well, so Arsenal have begun their their preseason training, and of course, they really brought in the players back uh, into the preseason training, and some players have already joined in. So we're going to discuss about that. We're going to discuss about uh, Locatelli's future. There isn't a bigger update about Locatelli, Hossam Awar, and of course the other important aspects of Arsenal's transfer window. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have some really awesome time while I shoot this episode. So the first news is that, of course, you can see Eden Ketia Callum Chambers in the training. But that's not all we have. We've got Ainsley Maitland-Niles back at the training ground. Yes, Ainsley is back. And how? Then there is Folren Balogun and Buka, uh, sorry, Nicola Pepe and, of course, Pablo Mari Villar also in the training ground. And now there we go. The new Arsenal number five. Well, Socrates Papastatopoulos had that number five before. So finally, rightfully so, it reaches out to the number five. The rightful heir to the number five is Thomas Partey, who got the number five and I hope might be able to turn the things around for himself. And there we have it, the gaffer. Oh, wow. It's been a long day without you, my friend. Very long, by the way. And the gaffer was ready. And there we have it. Pablo, Pablo Marie Villar talking to Arsenal youngster Harry Clark. Well, yes, in the preseason today. So that's probably Miguel Molina with uh, Mikel Arteta in the background as well. And there we go. Look at him. Let's look at him. <laughs> wow, he looks like 59. I don't know. He just looks like 59. Wow, what has... What has, what has time done to him? It's not kind at all. And there we have it, Emil Smith-Rowe, also back to the training. As already mentioned yesterday itself, I shared the images of him coming back for the uh, initial, um, you know, checking of the vitals and everything, and the strength, of course. So Emil is back in preseason training. And before we go talk about anything else, let's talk about Manuel Locatelli. So Fabrizio Romano says, Juventus want to buy Locatelli at all costs and the player's priority is Juventus. Arsenal are in contact for Locatelli but there are still no advanced negotiations because the player wants Juventus. So Fabrizio Romano also tweeted out himself. He says, Sassuolo CEO Carnevali to Sky. We're in talks for Locatelli with one club from abroad and it's really advanced. You know which club, right? We're uh, gonna meet with Juventus in the next few days. But there are no negotiations yet with Juve as Italian clubs are in difficult financial situations. So they, they really know what to do when they have to, you know, uh, 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 you know, tighten up the fists of the Italian club Juventus. So that's what Sassuolo are doing at the moment. Because according to everything that I know, nobody's pushing, nobody's pushing for an offer for Locatelli at all. Well, there we, there we have it. So now the question, Locatelli or Awar? This is the big question. I will leave it to you. Manu Locatelli or Hossam Awar? If given a choice, which one will you pick? Manu Locatelli or Hossam Awar? Now, why am I saying this? Because, well, of course, I have a plan. So according to a source, uh, Pete O'Rourke uh, about Arsenal, he says, from what I'm hearing from my French sources, Arsenal are serious about Hossam Awar. They did try to sign him last summer, but got messed around on the deal by Lyon which didn't go down too well with the Arsenal hierarchy. Talks have happened between the two clubs. I think Arsenal have made a cheeky bid of around 20 million euros, which is never going to get a player like Awar Leon are probably holding out for 30 to 35 million euros. I can see this deal happening because the player is keen to come. Suddenly, this, this bad boy wants to come to Arsenal. Okay, we believe in it. And according to Dabia Hatabi, she says that Arsenal maintains contact with Hossam Awar, but has not taken any concrete steps because they need to sell first. Arsenal need to sell first if they would want to even think of getting Hossam Awar. So get the get the Jaka deal done and then we speak about the unforbidden one. Wait, did I just rhyme right now? Okay, whatever. I just realized that. So Pete O'Rourke, well, his news and update is not just limited to Hossam Awar. Well, he's, he's got something to say about Lokonga as well. Yes, I'm back with the Lokonga news. I'm sorry. He says, I think it's just a matter of time because this one gets confirmed. Lokonga is keen on this move. Agreeing personal terms won't be an issue. I think next week we'll get his uh, this deal finally confirmed and done that. Lokonga is an Arsenal player. Again, not only this, he's also provided, provided an update about 
uh, Benjamin White. So Peter Rurke says, I know from speaking to a few people that he's been telling some of his England teammates that the deal is pretty much done. He expects to be an Arsenal player by the start of next season. I think that 55 million is the right figure. 55 million for him. He better be good. He better. He better be good. Okay. Moving on, so another bad uh, news. Well, I generally agree with what Gary Neville's opinions are, or rather, I actually find it amusing that he, he comes up with some really class acts at times. But this time, I would want you to judge him right now. And also in the comments, let me know what do you think about Gary Neville's, these comments on Bukayo Saka. Gary says, I'm not sure Saka will start Sunday. I think that might be just too much for him. What he did last night, the amount he has given in this tournament, I just feel we will see somebody else. I think it might be one game too much for him. I was there in Euro 1996 as a 21-year-old and I was absolutely exhausted as I went through the tournament. I actually think it could be a game for Rashford or Sancho to accompany Sterling in those wider positions. I think those wider positions need to be quick players who make out to in runs and so I don't think we will see Saka on Sunday. So Gary Neville actually tells that Rashford or Sancho should accompany Sterling on the wings and not Bukayo Saka because he believes Saka would be exhausted. He literally exhausted everything every time Southgate threw him on the field till now for his country and he just has one more chance to make the ultimate thing and you tell that he's not ready for that? He should be prepared for that tournament right from the get-go, right from the first day, like right before the qualification he should be ready for that. And you're telling me that he's not ready? You want Sancho or Rashford? Why would you want Southgate to change anything that has really worked for him till now? What are you talking about? Okay. Guys, in the comments, please let me know. Do you guys agree with Gary Neville? Do you want Saka to make way for either Sancho or Marcus Rashford on Sunday against Italy? Do you want Italy game to go as Gary Neville is suggesting? I'm saying no. What the? F Why would you change what's working for you? Anyways, so Fabrizio Romano also opened up about Benjamin White. He says there is nothing with Chelsea because he's really, really close to joining Arsenal. He has an agreement on personal terms already with Arsenal. He wants to join Arsenal. It's not done yet, but they're getting closer. And according to Tutor Sport, Arsenal have moved on from Locatelli with Hossam Awar now their priority. Tutor Sport also stated there has been an insistent pressing from the Gunners for Awar. And that's why they believe Juventus have a clearer path to sign Locatelli. Now, now, they, 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 they might have the clearer path, but I still don't understand. Of course, we wanted Awar last season. And if, if he's the guy that we are supposed to get, not Locatelli, of course, this guy would go, go, go to Juventus. But Juventus still have to afford him. That's still the problem. Like he, They have to afford him. They don't have the money. They've, they've li literally bled money. I don't know what's, what's going to happen. So we just have to wait and watch. So, we, we, we heard what Gary Neville had to say. Let's talk about Gareth Southgate, what he had to say after the game. He said, we, we've had three memorable games on the bounce now. We want to create memories for our nation. Uh, he said the other day, the other young ones think I, I, it's always like this. I just had to tell Saka and Bellingham it normally doesn't work like this. And he laughs that way. Well, Southgate did really uh, improve England's fortunes to take them to the finals of the Euros, of course. Before this game, they, they, I mean, they did not even concede concede a goal from uh, they, they have not before this game. They have not conceded a goal from open play the entire tournament. Southgate really, really has improved that defense of England, and credit 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 where it's due. All the best, England, against Italy. And here's the big part. Well, Santi Cazorla, by the way, has been named Qatar Player of. He's got is uh, the best player in Qatar. Football from Qatar Football Association, he was the best player last season in the league. And would you believe it? He was outstanding to get, I think they, they won the league and the cup as well. I think something like that. They got the double or something, uh, his team. And Boo, Boo Yaka, he's the best player. Just imagine if he was fit for Arsenal, man. If he would have been fit for how, how much of a duration that he played for Arsenal. If he was fit, my God, we would have been a different team. Anyways, luck is not always on our side. So with this, I'd like to end this episode. I will see you in the next one. Until then, cheers. And don't forget to um, let me know 
What do you guys think about the Gary Neville's comment on Bukayo Saka? For reference, if you've not seen that, just check 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 the check the video at around six or seven minutes, or rather five maybe. Uh, cheers! I'll see you in the next one.